In this video, we are going to be continuing looking at the characteristics of protons and MR. We are now going to focus specifically on chemical shift. When it comes to chemical shift, this is specifically the location of a signal. Okay? And understand that when it comes to the location of the signal, we are always going to utilize an internal standard. It happens to be that in many NMR solvents, a 1% TMS is added as an internal standard. The structure of TMS, which stands for tetramethylsilane, it is given in the top uh, right corner of the slide. I'm just going to highlight it here in red. So understand that the frequency of the protons in TMS is lower than the one that is observed from most organic compounds. The shift of a proton signal, understand that it is calculated as a comparison to TMS and is given by the following equation. Delta, which is the chemical shift, equals the observed shift from TMS in Hertz and is going to be divided by the operating frequency of the instrument also in Hertz. So understand that now we are going to utilize an example of what happens to the protons, and let's uh, do the example of benzene, when you utilize different instruments in order to see what are going to be specifically the, um, the chemical shift for the proton in benzene. Now, Benzene, remember that the structure of it is as following. It is a hexagon that has alternating double bond, single bond, double bond. And in benzene, even though there are six protons, I'm just illustrating one here. But remember that there are six of them and they're all equivalent. So for benzene specifically, if we're looking at the proton NMR on a 300 megahertz instrument, then the observed shift from TMS in hertz is going to be 2,181 hertz. If we divide that by the operating frequency of the instrument, which is 300 megahertz, again, 300 megahertz, then we are going to be changing it to units of hertz. So we are just going to be substituting the mega value by the numerical value that it contains. When we do this division, as you can see, the result is going to be uh, 7.27 times 10 to the negative six. This doesn't have units because we're going to cancel the hertz. What if now we look at the proton nuclei for benzene, but in a different instrument that has a different frequency? So again, utilizing the same equation for benzene, so looking at the protons in benzene, but now gathering it uh, on a 16 megahertz instrument, understand that the observed shift from TMS is going to be now 436 hertz. If we divide that by the operating frequency of the instrument, understand that we are going to divide that by the 60 megahertz, we obtain the same value. The hertz of the signal is different in different instruments, as you can see illustrated in the equation. But understand that the shift relative to TMS which that is given by the symbol delta, happens to be constant. The reason is uh, that we have this observation is that the shift relative to TMS is a dimensionless number because the units of hertz are going to cancel out. Now, Understand that the units of delta are often given as parts per million, in other words, ppm, and that is indicating that a signal is going to be reported as a fraction of the operating frequency of your spectrometer. Now, understand that if we're dealing specifically with a proton nuclei, then the signal that will appear on that uh, NMR for the proton uh, spectra is going to be between the units of 0 to 10 ppm. Now, 
continuing talking about chemical shift. In early days, when NMRs were um, utilized to analyze samples, they were obtained at constant energy over a range of magnetic field strengths. Okay? Nowadays, they're going to be a little bit different. When it comes to looking at uh, the field strength, understand that, as you can see, TMS is at zero. That's why it's our internal standard. And then as we are closer to that zero, understand that that is known as the upfield area. And if we are going from zero into larger numbers, that is known as a downfield, okay? So remember, downfield refers to low field strength, upfield refers to high field strength, okay? Now, understand that on the upfield part of a proton NMR, we're going to see the shielded protons, on the downfield area of our proton NMR, we tend to see the de-shielded protons. Understand that shielded protons require a stronger external magnetic field to be excited at the same energy as the shielded protons. Remember, when a proton has higher electron density, meaning that it is shielded, it all occurs because the electrons that are surrounding the nucleus are going to create their own magnetic fields. So the applied external magnetic field, it's going to be felt less for shielded protons when compared to de-shielded ones. And again, remember that this shielding and de-shielded is always in reference to the nucleus of a particular atom. And here we're just focusing on protons because we're talking about protons in MR. Currently, when NMR um, uh, it is utilized to analyze samples, it is done at a constant field strength over a range of energies. Okay? Now, one of the things that we also have to point out in this whole idea of upfield um, in an NMR spectra or downfield in an NMR spectra is that shielded protons have a smaller magnetic force acting on them. And remember, uh, when we are thinking about it, this is in relationship to the nucleus itself. Remember that that nucleus, if you have a shielded proton, um, then the electron density it is higher, so the applied magnetic field is going to be felt less when compared to a de-shielded proton, okay? So understand that shielded protons have smaller energy gaps and absorb lower energy radio waves. So that's why we have um, the low energy radio waves are found upfield in our NMR sector while higher energy radio waves are going to be found on up oh sorry downfield in our uh, NMR spectra okay so upfield is closer to zero downfield is away from zero towards the higher values now Let's look at specific examples and inductive effects for uh, chemical shifts that are known in molecules. Now we are going to look specifically at what happens to protons when they are in environments in which now they are exposed to halogens. So typically alkane protons give signals around 1 to 2 ppm. Okay? Understand that the protons can be shifted downfield, so toward larger values uh, in the NMR protons when we have nearby electronegative atoms. And all of that is caused because of de-shielded. So let's look at this example. So I'm just going to label this example uh, with a letter A, okay? And we are going to be comparing all of these values. So I'm just going to be creating a line to separate these molecules. 
Okay, so we're going to be looking at methane compared to methyl iodide, methyl bromide, methyl chloride, and even methyl fluoride. So one of the things that um, we need to think about when we're considering this is that all of these halogens have differences in electronegativity. It happens to be that as we look at the values for electronegativity, I'm not going to write them down, but remembering from general chemistry the electronegativity trends, remember that when we go from iodine up to fluorine, there is an increase in electronegativity. And it, when it comes to electronegativity, remember the electronegativity is going to be the ability of an atom to pull electron density towards it. So on each of these cases, our halogens are going to be pulling electron density towards them in each of these cases. Now, as it is expressed in the bullet point, we see by looking at the values for the chemical shift, we see that it is increasing as we're moving towards a more electronegative halogen in the molecule. We see that now the chemical shift is shifted more downfield. And we know that it is because of the shielding specifically. Because if we think about it now, in the environment that our proton is, having a more electronegative atom is going to pull electron density towards the electronegative atom and in consequence what happens is that now there's less electron density around our proton and that's why it's deshielded and in turn that means that it's going to be shifted more downfield now what about if we have now a case of having multiple halogens on uh, the same compound. So if we look in the bottle, we have CH3Cl compared to CH2Cl2 compared to CHCl3. So the increase in the number of halogens in the molecule also has an effect in the same trend. Here, similar to what we explained in example A, we have an increased pull okay, of the electron density towards the electronegative atom, that means that our proton is being more de-shielded, and what's going to happen is that it's going to be shifted more downfield in our proton NMR. So let's actually look at specifically a molecule, and what we see here is that in this molecule that uh, this is just one chloropropane, If we compare the carbon alpha to carbon beta to carbon gamma, each one of those protons is going to give a signal. Now, where do those signals appear? As you can see, the one that it is, the, the carbon, in this case carbon alpha, because it's directly attached to the chlorine, is going to be shifted more downfield in our um, proton NMR because we can see the value in the ppm. Now, as the carbon atoms with hydrogens move away from that electronegative atom, as you can see in carbon beta, then those protons are going to be appearing more upfield, meaning towards zero in our NMR spectra. So in general, the take home message from this is that if we have a particular chemical shift, understand that electronegative atoms are going to just reduce that electron density around that proton. And when that occurs, your protons are more deshielded, meaning that they are going to be appearing more downfield in the NMR spectra. Now, there is a way to predict chemical shifts, okay? And as you can see, we can start with the standard PPM for the type of proton that you have. You can consider, okay, do I have a methyl? Do I have a methylene? Or do I have a, a methane uh, proton? So as you can see, specifically, they have a particular PPM that they do appear. 
Now, there is a correction that you guys need to make on the slide. It's not on table 16.1 that is going to be in uh, the second edition, but if you have the third edition, it's going to be table 15.1. Um, you can utilize this table to actually adjust the PPM depending on the proximity to certain functional groups. So just be aware that when it comes to PPM, we actually have a table and we can determine the relative chemical shifts for the functional groups that we are commonly going to be working with in organic compounds. So, as I was mentioning, having a particular um, electronegative atom may have or we will have in this case uh, a chemical shift effect on the protons that are nearby and specifically in table 15.1 we are going to see the effects of neighboring functional groups on chemical shift here are um, in this part of table 15.1, uh, we are specifically looking at the functional group of an oxygen and specifically on an alcohol or an ether. So understand that typically if we have a methylene proton, meaning a CH2 as we expressed in the previous slide, they appear around a PPM of 1.2. Now, because... If we have an alcohol, meaning that the carbon that is holding that methylene group is directly attached to a hydroxyl group, understand that that is going to be increasing about 2.5 ppm units. So those protons, because they are in the context of an alcohol, that means that they are going to have a chemical shift now that appears at 3.7 ppm. So as you can see, more downfield. What about if we have an oxygen on an ester? So that methylene group that is directly attached to the single bond oxygen, okay, in that um, carboxyl group of an ester is going to be increasing the shift of the methylene group by 3 ppm. So these uh, CH2, this methylene group is now going to be appearing around uh, 4.2 uh, ppm specifically and as you can see we actually have the actual chemical shift that from the calculation it is actually very similar so understand that the effect of beta protons is about one-fifth the effect of an alpha proton okay now Understand that the next thing that I want to mention when it comes to the effects of nearby functional groups on chemical shift, the last one that I'm going to point out is carbonyl groups. So if you have a methylene group, uh, a CH2, next to a carbonyl, understand that that is going to increase the chemical shift by 1.0 ppm. Okay, so if we do a rough estimate, as you can see, you can estimate to see them around 2.2, but the actual chemical shift for this molecule, it is uh, 2.4. So even though um, these uh, references are useful, when it comes to NMR, understand that we have handbooks, that we have tables that can be found online for specifically what are the chemical shifts for the protons in a particular uh, functional group.